Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside Story. I am Nelly Skipper. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on our program, Kathy Rose of the API speaks to representatives of the newly rebranded University College of the Caribbean. We have a short feature on the official opening of the Agar International Airport. Meanwhile, Ashisha Sam will be chatting with a few Vincentians who were there, and Area Representative for South Windward, Frederick Stevenson, talks about the Agar International Airport opening. Stay with us. Inside Story continues in a moment. They are small and impressionable. How you interact with them is very important. So don't believe for one second that anything you do won't leave a lasting impression. The power to make a positive impression is in your hands. By playing with them, reading to them, talking and singing to them, you can help them develop positively because children are never too young to learn. This message was brought to you by the UNICEF Office for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, the Caribbean Child Support Initiative and this station. In 2002, the Institute of Management Sciences in Jamaica acquired the Institute of Management and Production to become the largest private higher education consortium in Jamaica. This merger created the University College of the Caribbean and became the parent organization in 2004. The university is currently undergoing significant changes in its offerings. It has rebranded and is now called University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. Kathy Rose of the API spoke with Program Coordinator Nicole Dixon-Jacobs and Recruitment and Enrollment Manager Andrea Ray, both from the UCC, about the university's rebranding. Good evening. I have with me here Mrs. Andrea Ray and Mrs. Nicole Dixon-Jacobs. They're from the University College of the Caribbean. Um, the university is going to be, while they're in the process of relaunching, they're going to tell us all about it. Ladies, welcome to the Students of API. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you. First of all, give me a brief history of the university. As you mentioned, it's University College of the Caribbean. That's the previous name. Since this week, we have recently rebranded. We are now the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. Where are you located? We are located in Kingston, Jamaica. We have our main campus in New Kingston, but we do have locations island-wide in Jamaica. We also have recently gotten international accreditation through an Congrats. ASIC, right, <laughs> through ASIC, which is one of the premier um, accrediting companies in the UK. So that gives us now premier international standing. Um, additionally, we are one of the premier uh, private institutions in Jamaica and we are growing. Of course, with that too, we also want to get St. Vincent in so we're to relaunch um, our market and make sure that we get some, some students to be able to come on board as we look to launch and regrow the institution. How long has the university been in existence? Uh, we have been in existence since the early 2000s. We were first um, branded with IMP and IMS and we brought, brought that together and formed UCC and that was the University College of the Caribbean and now since we have been getting all this new accreditation and growing and getting bigger we have now changed and we're proud to say that we're now University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. Um, we're here really to intro reintroduce ourselves because we're not new to St. Vincent. We currently have students here in St. Vincent. What we're here to promote is actually our online programs because you can still be here at home in St. Vincent and study with us in Jamaica. Now, if somebody, they're looking for a program or they want to further their studies, so they're just, they haven't decided what they want to do, why would they want to choose you? What you're offering that's different to the others? What we offer right now, as I mentioned, we have accredited bachelor's program, master's program. We do have the flexibility with online, so it gives you don't have to leave your job or leave St. Vincent. You can study from the comfort of your home. In addition to that, we have flexible payment plans. We also have, um, I should say, economical cost. So you can get a premier education, accredited, but at the same time, it will the cost will be affordable for you. So we have affordable cost as well as we have great, great um, lecturers and facilitators who really made the experience worthwhile. I know I, I probably might be a little biased to ask you all in terms of the feedback you get from your students, like what they say about the, the, the programs and how they've enjoyed it. Well, here at St. Vincent's we have students who um, 
as I said, are currently with us and they can tell you they have enjoyed being with us and will continue with us doing their masters or there are some who are doing their associates and will go on to their bachelors. Um, what makes us different or unique is that we are all over the Caribbean and not only the Caribbean, we have students that are international. We have students that are with us from Sweden and Japan. So wherever you are, you can study with us. And you know, if you want to come to Jamaica, you're welcome to come to Jamaica and study with us face to face as well. We have that blended opportunity. You can do online and face to face at the same time. What's some of the programs? I know you say you have masters and bachelors, but in terms of the breakdown like accounting, what, what, what career programs you can choose from? Right, so for our bachelor's program, we have our bachelors, we have IT, we have human resource, we have a business um, administration with a couple of different majors, including the um, financial, we have accounting and we have financial management. Um, we also have um, HR, we HR, have HR, human resource. And then on a master's level, we do have a master's in business administration, we have a master's in public administration. We also have partnerships with other universities, including the University of London, that we offer our law programs. Um, that's face-to-face -face in, in Jamaica, of course. But we also have our collaboration partnership with Florida International University, where students are able to pursue their master's degree. And with that collaboration and partnership, we do have master's in business, we have curriculum management, Instruction and we have engineering management that we do in partnership with Florida International University in Florida. What's your most popular program in terms of registration from students? Well, a lot of students are doing their bachelors. A lot of students are doing business administration. We have quite a bit of students doing HR as well and marketing. So the business courses are normally the popular courses to do or the popular degree programs that we do have students doing at UCC. I know you mentioned that you have flexible payment plans, but how affordable are these? Oh the gosh, programs? it's very <laughs> affordable. Um, we work with um, a lot of students who might be in the public sector. Or we have students who might get scholarships. There are scholarships that you can get with UCC as well. So whatever plan it is that you need, we have it. So we, we'll be able to work with any student with any um, areas that they have financial and compared with other with other universities, um, we we must say comparatively it is it, it's affordable in terms of the tuition cost. But in addition to that, we know that students may not always have the upfront cost. So hence we have the flexible payment plan where you can either pay um, per semester, you can pay for the year. So as somebody think about you know pursuing a bachelor's degree or even an associate's degree, which they can earn after two years, they, you don't have to come up with that money upfront. So you can work on a payment plan where you can do it pay on a semester basis and then you can break it on monthly whatever works for you we try to make it as flexible as possible and tailor make it sometimes for the individual based on their their payment arrangement um, also wanted to mention that we have a summer promotion so if students are looking to get started this May because we have three intakes for the year we have January of course which is just passed we have May coming which starts on May 8th classes start and we have September which is the fall and that those classes start September 4th but the promotion that I'm so excited about is the one starting May and so for students, if they register, get accepted, and create, and they select two modules, then the third will be 50% off. And I'm very excited about oh, so that. So that's, that's the excitement for you? That is yes. the excitement <laughs> for you. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think that's great. Is, great. I mean, we are considering the fact that we um, want students to be excited about their education, because we believe education is a great investment. But at the same time, we're offering some incentive for students to get on board. So, so that, that, is, that is the excitement for us. As Andrea and mentioned, it's an investment. So mm -hmm. there should be no reason why any student should not want to come to school. We're able to work with them. And you should not be worrying about financial situations while coming to school. So we want to make that the background. And what about support level? Because sometimes people overlook that. You know, right. As mm -hmm. a student gets into a program, I mean, things happen. You know, Absolutely. maybe halfway through some emergency happened. What sort of support level the university has to, to assist people to cope with it, all of this? I'm glad you said that. I even speaking to, to one of our current students last night, he, he was mentioning that the lecturers, I, I can't stress that, because we make sure, especially in the online environment and the distant learning, that we have those lecturers that are going to be supportive. 
what we have sometimes in the, in the online environment, not sometimes, what we have in the online environment is that students would log on once per week for a chat, and that is with their other classmates and the instructor. And so we have instructors that will remind students, like, hey, remember your online chat is, for example, this Wednesday, because we do know students have busy lifestyle, and we, we kind of have a collaborative, closer relationship with technology, because we realize that even though there's a distance in terms of space, we want to make it as interactive and as close as possible. So if there's an issue, contact your instructor. We also have, as we mentioned, Mrs. Nicole Jacobs, she's one of our online coordinator, and she works closely with the students. We make sure we have we have that, what should I say, communication. You can send her an email, you can call. There are also people involved too in our online department that make sure that we are always in communication with our students so they don't feel left out. If they have an issue, not able to sit, you know, as we said last night in the, in the information session, things happen. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is to communicate with us. You're not able to finish the semester, things happen, you want to take a break from school, we all work with you to make sure that that is, that is a part of the process and or we can get you back. At the end of the day, we want to make sure you complete your degree. That's what it's all about. So as we wrap up, um, if somebody has listened to this and they're all excited about your summer promotion and everything and they want to get in contact or they want to, they want to enroll, how can they reach you? Great question. As I mentioned, I'm Andrea Ray, we have Nicole Disson Jacob. Or online, they can either go online to www.ucc.edu.jm or they can contact us via email as well at, um, at online.ucc.edu or by telephone at 1-876-665-4002 or 1-876-665-4007-9. Well, thank you very much, ladies, for coming. And I really hope that this turned out, turns out to be fruitful, that you have a lot of online registers. I'm assuming that you went to other Caribbean countries? Yes, we, we visited yes. St. Um, Grenada. We just came from Grenada. So we've had, we have quite a few students in Grenada, so we're hoping to get as much students also on track in St. Vincent. Well, I hope so too. Okay. I do. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having You're us. Welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Coming up on Inside Story, Ashisa Sam speaks to some well-wishers at the opening of the Argyle International Airport. Stay with us. Our natural history includes the long-tailed white tropic birds that migrate to our skies and rock faces. The North Atlantic humpback whale that comes to our warm waters to give birth to and nurse their young. The critically endangered hawksbill turtle and the St. Vincent parrot. These are all creatures that the National Trust seeks to protect for future generations. For more than 40 years, the National Trust has worked to save St. Vincent and the Grenadines' most beloved places, landscapes and seascapes where great moments of history took place. We work together with communities to value and protect important pieces of our cultural community, national history and environment, such as the series of decorated Salador pots found in Clear Valley, signifying that St. Vincent's civilization is almost 2,000 years old. We do this all because the next generation needs to know our stories, as they will only inherit the places and species we choose to save today. We urge you to plant a tree under whose shade you never plan to sit. Join the National Trust today. Thanks for staying with us. The Argyle International Airport was officially opened on February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2017. Thousands of Vincentians and well-wishers turned out to witness the event. Ashisa Sam of the API got a chance to speak with a few of them about the airport's opening. Here's what they had to say. We're here with a passenger who just came on a domestic flight from Bekwe. Uh, tell, us, tell us how you feel about the opening of the Agile International Airport. Let's see that I was, waiting, I was waiting for it so long. And it was my pleasure, enjoyable, to go to Bekwe last night and catch a plane to come up this morning. I was very overwhelming. Touchdown was very nice. One of the best I ever did since I'm flying in a plane. Definitely. So that was deliberate, the fact that you went down to Beckway to come up today? Specially. Special to, to land down on it as one of the first. 
So you mean you must be part of that, that historic of, occasion? Must be part of that historic occasion, me and my friend Maxi. Must be a really wonderful feeling. I, I felt good, definitely. It's already, it's here. What we should do? We have to welcome it. We all got to walk and make sure it's, it stays and be a part of us. It's a part. All right, thank you very much. And I really envy you that you were part of such a, um, a historic occasion. Mm, I, can't, I can't help it, but I got to be there. All right, all Take the care. best to you. You're welcome. We just met up with a passenger who just came off Caribbean Airlines from JFK International Airport. Good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. How do you feel about the opening of the Very, airport? very good. Excited. Wonderful. What was it like for you on that flight? Tears. Because I never know I will live to see this day. And so when you came off and you saw all the people and all the excitement, what, what was it like? Oh, man. Words can't express it. It was nice, wonderful. So what do you think about the overall building and, and everything? Beautiful, here? beautiful job, well done. Very good, very and I good. hope that all Vincentian with the government of St. Vincent get together and make it work. Okay. Tell us how you feel about the opening of the Argyle International Airport. Would you please feel me? Feel me? Yeah. <laughs> how I feel? Normal? Most of excitement. <laughs> I feel great, I feel great, I feel so great. I'm going to take the commission of a ride on my bike. So the next time you see me, you will see me on my bike, portraying the International Airport, right? So anyway I go from here on, I'm taking it with me. I hope that the plane is there and they don't take off because I go in with it. I just go. <laughs> hey, tell us how you feel. Well, this feeling is a feeling that will never return. I doubt it will ever return because today will not be repeated. This is history in the making and Phil and I, we are part of history. I am, oh boy. Oh boy. Totally excited. Man is oh girl. <laughs> so you think all the sacrifices that we have made for the um, Argyle International Airport, do you think it's worth it? It's worth it. It's worth it. We, and in the future, we'll be, reap the benefits. If we not, our children and our children's children will. Good day, ma'am. Hello. Where are you from? From the United States, uh, outside of Washington, D.C. So you just came in on an international flight? Uh, yes, we came via Barbados. Oh, via Barbados? Yes, and Union, and Beckway, before oh. we got here. <laughs> but you know here at the Agal International Airport, welcome. Yes, this is. You. we've heard about it opening. Okay, and today is the actual opening of the airport. How do you feel being a part of such, such an historic occasion? Oh, it's amazing. I've, I had no idea there were going to be so many people here. And we, when, we, when we landed, we could see people everywhere. And everybody in red shirts. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. I know that. <laughs> and I'm sure you must have seen um, a lot of other airports. Um, what is your impression of the Agile International Airport as an international traveler? Oh, well, it's hard to say yet because we came in on a small plane, but it's certainly bigger than anything that we've been to today. Even better, bigger than Barbados, I think, or at least the same size. Uh, not quite as big as New York or Washington, but certainly adequate here and beautiful. Thank you very much. We are happy that you are such a part of a, an historic occasion. Thank Welcome you. to the Argyle International Airport and to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tell us how you feel about the opening of the Argyle International Airport. Well, I, at first, when I came down here, I was speechless. But right now, I'm very, very excited because I didn't expect to see a beautiful building like this. And by having an international airport, it will open jobs. We as farmers, I am a farmer, and we as farmers have to plant more things that the Mary Jet will fly it with our produce fresh to different countries. So we will get more income into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I know that our future generation will benefit from this airport, this international airport. So you think all these sacrifices that we have made um, for the construction of this airport, you think it was worth it? Yes, it paid it off. It paid it off. And I want to say thank God for the Prime Minister because Without him, this airport could not have built because many have their money in their back pocket and sit on it and he's the one sit fit and build us our international airport and thank God for that. 
Where are you from? Oh, I'm from friends. Hey. And what's your purpose here in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines? Um, I came to visit my cousin. Okay. And so you are here at the opening of the Agal International Airport. Tell us how you feel being a part of that. Um, I feel... I don't know what to think about this um, big event in this island because I know that St. Vincent is closing a page of his history. Because what I, I really appreciate St. Vincent because it's... Um, um, how to say, really natural, everyone is telling you in the street, take it easy, take it easy, and in France, everyone, everybody is under pressure, so when you arrive here, you feel comfortable, and for me, this airport means that by the time it will become maybe more busy here, more people, so I see everyone enjoying the, the new airport. Uh, what is your impression of the physical structure here? Yeah, the building is really nice. The color, but we were thinking like maybe it will need a lot of money to take care about this building. But yeah, it's a really nice building. Okay. And you said you came here via boat, right? So um... Yeah, we spent three weeks to cross the ocean and because this was the beginning of a big adventure. So um, it was my first sailing experience and uh, yeah, when you are in the ocean you feel, you feel so small. <laughs> so how did you know about this event today, the opening of the Agal International Airport? Um, I know it because everyone knows <laughs> here, everybody knows. You said that you came here via boat. I am hoping that one of these days you'll come via airplane so yeah, that you can sure. come through the Agal International Airport. Wouldn't you love that? Yeah, sure. I have my cousin, he has his girlfriend in, in abroad and he's really happy because he will be able to visit her uh, more often. Oh, okay. All right, thanks very much for chatting with us and um, do enjoy your stay here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and I hope that you continue to experience the hospitality of Vincentian. Thank you so much. As a young Vincentian, how do you feel about the opening of the Agal International Airport? Well, as a young, young adult, I feel like it's a good move that the Prime Minister made to upgrade the country. So, as a Vincentian, right, what does this airport mean to you? Well, as every Vincentian, it means a lot. We are very excited for our first international airport. <coughs> well, I feel good because it can help the tourism industry, help to bring in tourists and stuff, help to boost the economy, bring in revenue and stuff like that. And it could help the country overall to go. As of intention, tell us how do you feel about the opening of the Agal International Airport? Um, I think it's a big historic step. Um, it's something that we have been waiting for for a very long time. So, um, as a Vincent and as somebody who plans to go further into my field of study and sports and other stuff, it's a chance for us to be able to show the world our culture, our talent and other stuff and also to bring others here as well to boost the economy and also to help our culture and our development as well. So how do you feel being a part of this historic occasion attending today's ceremony? Um, I think it's very big. Um, I was speaking to my father this morning and he was talking about when the E.T. Joshua Airport opened and he was very enthusiastic about this opening. So I think as a young generation we should be too because it's something that even the older generation has been waiting for for a very long time. So I think we should be grateful and thankful for it. How do you feel about the Agal International Airport? I'm excited! Up next, we bring you a feature on the opening of the Agile International Airport. Stay with us. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Welcome back. We now bring you a repeat feature of the official opening of the Argyle International Airport. 
On August 8, 2005, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves made a speech outlining government's commitment to constructing the Argyle International Airport and how it will be financed. Many doubted the reality of this dream, although deep in their hearts there was the burning desire to have it come true. Well, after many setbacks, lots of criticisms, on February 14th, Dr. Gonsalves, along with a number of local, regional and international dignitaries, inaugurated the Argyle International Airport. The official opening ceremony witnessed by thousands of Vincentians, as the day was also designated as a public holiday, had the ambience of a celebratory event, yet a touch of intimacy, the sense like it was a family get-together. Sadly, missing from the momentous occasion were three stalwarts who, along with the Republic of China on Taiwan, assisted with the construction of the Argyle International Airport. The three stalwarts, fallen soldiers as they were referred to, are former Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Patrick Manning, Commander Hugo Chavez of Venezuela, and Commander Fidel Castro of Cuba. These gentlemen, all deceased, made significant contributions on behalf of their governments and people of their respective countries. They were all represented at the ceremony. Wife of the late Patrick Manning, in her remarks said growth, development and transformation excites her. Hence, it was easy for her to recognize PM Gonsal's passion to develop St. Vincent and the Grenadines through the use of his deep intellect and vision. Today's ceremony officially marks the beginning of the halcyon days of beautiful St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And what is exciting for me is the involvement of all of you, the people. You can feel the excitement. It is palpable. Look around. Look at the uproar that we heard with the clapping as the planes land. When our plane landed this morning, the whole plane went up into an uproar as the members and the started clapping. Look at the picnic baskets up on the hill. Heard the steel band playing. Look at you, the people, milling around, touching and breathing and looking as though, and you know what I feel that you are saying? That this is mine. This belongs to me. And that I will take loving care of this airport. What could surpass that comfort and that peace of mind of such a great accomplishment. What could surpass the pride that this beautiful building brings? What could surpass the excitement of development? There are so many benefits to derive and so many possibilities. You have easy access to and from the rest of the world, opening up a brave new world for you. You have increased visitors, satisfied and pleased with the beauty of your paradise. And like the figures on the Grecian urn, forever yearning, forever returning, frozen in time. You're going to have increased job creation, diversified and creative, involving all and bringing benefits to many. There will also be increased income. That will be the beginning of an improved quality of life. And given time, the list will go on and on because the possibilities are endless. Among those who saw the vision of PM Gonzalez and quickly rendered support was the former Cuban president Fidel Castro. President Castro died in late November 2016. Cuba offered a lot of technical support in a number of crucial areas during the airport's construction. Speaking through an interpreter and bringing greetings on behalf of his president Raul Castro, His Excellency Salvador Valdez Mesa, Vice President, Council of State of the Republic of Cuba, said the evening was celebratory as the airport would assist with economic development of this nation. Su construcción es fruto de la amistad y solidaridad caribeña y ejemplo de lo que puede lograrse 
cuando existe una verdadera voluntad política de impulsar iniciativas en beneficio de nuestros pueblos en el marco de la cooperación entre las naciones del sur que justifica la alegría que apreciamos en este acto. We are gathered here in this lovely, joyful and exciting evening in the midst of Caribbean music and the sound of aircraft turbines to open a facility that is essential to the economic development of a sister nation for the Caribbean community. Its completion is a product of Caribbean friendship and solidarity and an example of what can be achieved when there is political will to stimulate initiatives that benefit our peoples within the framework of South-South cooperation. Es justo agradecer a nuestro querido amigo y camarada Raz González, a su gobierno, la oportunidad que brindó para que más de 300 colaboradores cubanos hayan tenido el privilegio de ofrecer su modesto aporte y así corresponder a la histórica, permanente y generosa solidaridad del Caribe con la Revolución Cubana. It is only fair that we thank our dear friend and comrade Ralph Gonzalez and his government for the opportunity given to over 300 Cuban cooperation workers to have the privilege of making their modest contribution to this project and thereby reciprocate the Caribbean's historic, permanent and general solidarity with the Cuban Revolution. Al mismo tiempo, reconocer la hospitalidad y deferencia que han tenido al invitar a esta ceremonia a una representación de esos colaboradores quienes por años convivieron con el hermano pueblo vicentino y hoy visiblemente emocionados tienen la satisfacción de acompañarlo y ver los sueños comunes hechos realidad. I also wish to recognize the distinctive and hospitable gesture to extend an invitation to a sample of those Cuban workers to attend this ceremony. Those Cubans spent years living side by side with our Vincentian brothers and sisters, and visibly excited today, they are pleased to join you in witnessing your shared dreams come true. La vocación internacionalista del pueblo cubano que intenta saldar su deuda con la humanidad no hubiese sido posible sin la guía, la perseverancia y las continuas enseñanzas del líder histórico de la Revolución Cubana, comandante en jefe Fidel Castro Ruz. The Cuban people's international is calling in its efforts to settle its debt to humankind would not have been realized had it not been for the guidance perseverance and consistent teachings of the Cuban Revolution's historic leader, Commander-in-Chief Fidel Castro. Representing President Nicolas Maduro, who was unavoidably absent, His Excellency Elias Haiwa pointed out that the airport was a symbol of friendship between the two countries, building a world of friendship and love. La Alianza Bolivariana de nuestros pueblos es la suma de voluntades. The uh, ALBA is this coalition of, will of the willing that is making possible, Para hacer posible la dignidad de nuestros pueblos. the dignity of our peoples. Y una prueba de ello es la inauguración de este gran aeropuerto internacional de Algail. And a proof of this is the inauguration of this great international airport, Argyll of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. En la misma medida que fortalezcamos nuestras relaciones de forma integral, en esa misma medida estaremos creando las condiciones para contar con sociedades más justas y más libres. As we strengthen our relationships in a comprehensive manner, we will be creating the conditions to have better, freer and just societies. Es la hora de nuestros pueblos. The time of our peoples has come. Nos decía nuestro comandante Chávez. Said our commander Hugo Chávez. Y estamos seguros que así será. And we are certain that that will be the case. Tanto cada uno de nuestros países como nuestra alianza en su conjunto comparten las mismas esperanzas 
y los, y los mismos sueños comunes. Our individual countries and our alliance, we share the same hopes and the same challenges. Cuenta ahora el pueblo hermano de San Vicente y las Granadinas con esta obra necesaria para el desarrollo de todo su potencial turístico. The people, the sister nation of San Vincent and the Grenadines, they enjoy these facilities, which is essential for the, the development of its tourism in its beautiful islands. Se supera definitivamente ese escollo que eran las dificultades de transporte aéreo. We have uh, with this uh, work uh, surmounted the hurdle that uh, made difficult the development of tourism and transport in the islands. Es una dicha, una inmensa dicha compartir con el pueblo de San Vicente. It is este really día. a joy and a great joy to share with you. Y con este insigne líder caribeño que es nuestro hermano and to share with this outstanding Caribbean leader who is Ralph Gonsalves. Our brothers. <laughs> Ralph is an authentic y leal amigo de Venezuela. Ralph is an authentic and a loyal friend of así, Venezuela. Así lo reconocemos. And uh, we recognize him as so. Con la inauguración de este gran aeropuerto se abre una gran oportunidad en común para el turismo venezolano y de San Vicente y las Granadinas. The inauguration of this great airport uh, opens a great opportunities for tourism between Venezuela and San Vicente and the Granadines. Pero por igual constituye en sí mismo para el desarrollo de toda la región. Caribeña. But it's also a major step forward for the development of our Caribbean regions. Toda vez que redundará en ingentes beneficios para el intercambio comercial. Since it's going to foster uh, the commercial exchange in our in our area. Entre nuestras naciones. Among our nations. The honor of delivering the featured address was given to Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. Prime Minister Gonzalez said that the Argyle International Airport project is the largest capital project in the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. According to Dr. Gonzalez, it is and was a project of great cause. He never wavered and despite occasional disagreement, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines have never wavered for the fulfillment of the building of the International Airport and there is much to be thankful for. This is a historic site, and that is why anybody who wants to change the name from Argyle International Airport to anybody else's name, I say do not do it. Well, certainly I will not allow you to do it. In my lifetime, I will fight you. And I'm saying to you, never allow it to be changed. This Argyle is a historic treasure trove, an archaeological source of tremendous importance. Argyle, majestic Argyle, soaked with the sweat and blood of our ancestral pains, travails and joys, once broken, shattered and compromised, but made whole today through the fever of history. And our Argyle is on display. Not their Argyle, our Argyle. Bounded on the east, the southeast, by our beautiful Atlantic waters. And on the west, by undulating valleys and hills and lush green, they are joyful together. Above us, is the cathedral of the blue sky and as we saw today the sun very high as a steeple the terminal building is redolent of the blue and green around us the interior decor speaks to this sense and sensibility the mahogany ceiling in the roof at the departure hall 
special, specially selected from the woods of our forest. And the stones on the exterior walls facing east, which come from our rivers and our quarries, signify our strength and resilience, the basis for our optimism. You know, that stonework was done by the hands of Vincentians. Some people say that the Vincentians, insofar as our work in stone is concerned, that we are the Italians of the Caribbean. I prefer to say that the Italians, in respect of stonework, are the Vincentians of Europe. I want to thank our master craftsmen who laid these stones. You see, this airport was not just built like that. It's loving. The design of the roof is like the waves. And the two ends of the roof are like wings of birds. We have del delivered something with love. We must not be diverted by that which is central to our existence. The Agal International Airport is designed to accommodate jets as large as Boeing 747-400s. Reporting for the API, I am Ashisi Assam. Stay with us. When we come back, we have an interview with Parliamentary Representative for South Windward, the Honorable Frederick Stevenson. As a young boy, I used to go on the beaches with other friends and catch turtles and they come to lake. And for me, it was fun and a means of survival as well. But as you can see, I stand in between two outboard motors. I choose mechanic as a living. And as I joined the Union Island Environmental Attackers, and I went on the beach and see the procedures of a turtle coming all the way from Europe or to Lee. I think it was a sad mistake I have made. Right now, I take it up as a job to protect the turtles and encourage others not to kill the turtles anymore. And that's my contribution. Welcome to the realization of a dream, the coming on stream of the Argyle International Airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is an awareness building and sensitization program produced by the Agency for Public Information in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister and Temple Cable Television Network. This afternoon, we're in the picturesque community of South Windward, and we've got a very special guest in the person of the area representative, the Honorable Frederick Stevenson. Minister Stevenson, welcome to our program. Thank you very much, Diane, and, and good afternoon to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, people of South Windward, and more importantly, this afternoon we're here at beautiful Pure Vale. Oh, Minister, the beauty in the background is to die for. I, I tell you, uh, what we're seeing behind there is the largest capital project here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines undertaken by the Unity Labour Party government. It's called the uh, Argyle International Airport. And this is where we want to begin our little chat this afternoon. How do you feel about this magnificent project in your constituency? Well, Dian, it is an exciting feeling. Um, I've lived at Argyle, so I know what Argyle used to look like before today. Um, the transformation has been tremendous. Um, we have seen mountains taken down, valleys being filled, rivers being spanned, all together. 
to ensure that we have the Argyle International Airport that is behind of us here in, in Peruvian Vale. Uh, not only that I am elated being the parliamentary representative at this time, but I know the entire community here at Peruvian Vale, South Ronald, and the whole nation We're happy at this moment in time, the imminent opening of the Argyle International Airport. Well, Minister, hinged on all of this is that you're also the Minister of Social Development in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. From a ministry perspective, though, how do you see the Argyle International Airport contributing to what your ministry does? Well, the, the, the Ministry of National Mobilization, um, Social Development, um, Gender, the Persons with Disabilities and Youth um, is a very important ministry within the, within the government just a few weeks ago. A former parliamentarian reminded me that um, it is called the Ministry of Home Affairs in, in, in some countries. And uh, the, the work that we do and the advances that we try to make as a ministry in terms of poverty alleviation, um, benefits for children going into school, the social welfare programs, the public assistance, the Argyle International Airport once up and running and the, the persons who would come to St. Vincent and the Grenadines from time to time and the, 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 the funds and the financial development activities that would, would come as part of the Argyle International Airport would redound to the benefit of many of our clients who are part of the, the ministry's program. Well, let's talk about uh, the opportunities in terms of jobs and other opportunities which, which, which are generally now have become more available with the opening of the airport. Uh, Peruvian Vale here and this Argyle community uh, up to Caldan and Bible, Bridgetown, Cedars, we are practically an agricultural community. Um, if you look ahead over there, you'd see lands that used to be um, with bananas many years ago. Some of them are lying fallow because um, they, 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 of the situation in relation to the bananas. But bananas are coming back and uh, this community produces the most peanuts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So I know that a number of our farmers are, are getting ready because they understand the importance of agriculture and they, they understand the importance of getting agricultural produce out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Sweet potatoes, cassavas, yams, plantains, as, as I said before, peanuts. And those are areas that the, the people in this community would love to see develop. And I know that with the improved air access in and out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the community surrounding the Argyle International Airport and generally throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines, those agricultural um, communities would thrive again. Well, I heard you mention cassava. You didn't say farine. Farine, of course, is always on the list that yes. you have to send. That you have to, when, you have to right. send, send away. Right. But what about the avenues for a lot of bread and breakfast in terms of the construction of homes? Because this area is known to have a lot of the returning nationals, especially from the UK, some of them having to give up their homes to facilitate this project and so forth. Uh, how about that aspect of um, it all? Yes. Um, the, the two, in, in relation to the, the development of, of Argyle and the construction, over 150 upper and middle income homes or houses um, were, were relocated to different areas in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, most of them through Harmony Hall and at um, Carapan area. Um, the, the, the development of these communities would hinge on the opening of the, the Argyle International Airport. A number of persons who have come forward and said yes, that they want to, to become involved in improving their, their homes for, um, and their houses for, for bed and breakfast. And, and I know a couple of persons are interested in, in putting small hotels in, in some areas here in, in at Argyle and, and Carapan and Calder. And, and so these are all developmental plans and developmental activities that would bring benefits to the people here in, in, in South Ronald, Peruvian Vale, the closer communities within, because you know, um, with an international airport up and running, 
there'd be need for for stillover visitors, people from the Grenadines who are coming up have to, to take a, a, an early flight or, or a late flight and, and can't get home. Um, on they would they would have to stay somewhere. And uh, Argyle here and Proven Vale is, is is within walking distance of the airport, and so these are necessary developmental um, plans that the people ought to put in place. And we have had some some. Um, discussions with the residents and they're they're really up they're really up to it um, if you notice just across the street there there's one small um, building there that that has a number of rooms there's one in, in Bible which was recently constructed with 14 14 self-contained rooms and people people are, are getting on board and and more more of that to come what is the mood like in this uh, constituency? I could only imagine because in Kingstown, they, er, every other word out of anyone's mouth is Argyle and the airport. What is it like in this constituency? <laughs> I tell you, Dion, last night we had the turning on of the lights at, at Argyle and it was spectacular. It was spectacular. Um, every afternoon, there's, there's the lookout spot just down the road here. Um, we call it the airport lookout. And that is where everybody the entire community of Provenvale, people from, from wherever, just come here at Provenvale, at the lookout site, just to, to look across on the airport and to see. And persons have been looking out from there since the first piece of earth moving equipment came to, to Argyle to, to do what we, we have behind here. My producer tells me that this is the best location to, to view the airport. I, I, I think so. Um, I, the, the trees in the background were cut down recently and uh, this was a hideaway so nobody really ever thought of this before and, until the trees were cut down and, and, um, and removed and I am telling you Dian, this is going to be a most beautiful lookout site I could just imagine seeing the number of persons who would stand on this lookout spot come the 14th of, of February. So Minister, what sort of other development plans are in the area and train for the development of not only this constituency, but will complement what is happening at the airport? Uh, well, Dian, just past here at Proven Vale, just around the corner, within three minutes of driving, is the Spring Gardens. The most beautiful and picturesque small hotel in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I believe that there, Mr. Brown has completed just about uh, 30, 40 rooms there and uh, has plans for ex extensions. Um, there's a, there's a, a ballroom where weddings and, and other activities are, are held, um, concerts, conferences. There's a lovely, lovely bar in, 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 in that area. And uh, I, I want to say to you that there are plans on stream for the development of a beautiful tourism attraction. I'm, I'm saying it now because I know it's a work in progress for the, the shipping bay area. We intend to, to do a nice small fishing village there, um, put in some tourism boots and, to, and do some reclamation of, 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 of the sea. And the sea defences, and uh, we are going to ensure that um, Argyle is complemented by what we do at Shipping Bay, and to, and to just ensure that a number of visitors would continually come to to Proven Vale, to Argyle, and to St Vincent and the Grenadines because this is just the natural place to be. Well, you mentioned while we were having our prep talk just before uh, we started that pretty soon too you will have the largest bridge the longest bridge. longest bridge sorry yes um, I was told by the chief engineer mr. Brent Bailey who was actually my schoolmate and my my good friend and brother um, that the, the bypass Bailey bridge that is now been put in place down at Argyle is going to be the longest bridge crossing in St. Vincent and the Grenadines so here at Argyle we have the largest capital project the, the airport and pretty soon we, we're having the longest bridge so there's, there's a lot of things to boast about here in this in this beautiful constituency of, of South Wind. I know that my colleague ministers Saboto Caesar 
uh, Minister Jimmy Prince and Camilo Gonzalez are laying claim on, on the International Airport here at Niagara. But I just want to say to them that the, the boundaries are, are a little bit too far away for them to, to lay any claim, <laughs> to lay any claim on Niagara. <laughs> and what better way to hear that than from this program? And Minister, as we close this afternoon, if you can just tell us, when we drive into Argyle on the afternoon of the 13th of uh, February, and when we come back very early on the morning of the 14th, when the first Liat flight lands and the first charter lands, what can we expect? Dian, you can expect that the streets of Argyle would be filled. The, the, the persons from, from the entire St. Vincent and the Grenadines would, would just be out there in their numbers to celebrate because it is a day of celebration. We have been hearing the talks about International Airport and Airport Development for St. Vincent and the Grenadines for many, many years. And it is through the good and hard work of the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and, and his cabinet. Um, those who have been there before in, in, in 2001 and, and those who came after, after 2010. So Vincent Beach, for example, who lives just across from where we are, we are filming this, this program, has been a stalwart um, individual in relation to the airport development and the support given to the Honorable Prime Minister. But I know on that day, and actually, Dion, on the evening of the... 13th, between 4.30 and 6 p.m., there is an activity at Argyle for the unveiling of the, 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 the plaque and the, the signage of flag raising ceremony and the, the blessing of the entire airport terminal building, the um, control tower and the, and the runway. Um, an Anglican priest, the, the, the very Reverend Dean Otis Nichols, would, would do the blessing on that day. So there's an activity for persons to come on the 13th and also on, on the, the holiday, the, the 14th. Um, I, I just feel overwhelmed. I, it, 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 I'm, I'm bubbling over with, with, with joy. Um, just to see, just to see that guy. Just to see the transformation that has taken place there. And uh, that transformation would redound to the benefit of Vincentians now and for the future. This has been another edition of the program, The Realization of a Dream. They come in on stream of the Argyle International Airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My guest on today's program, the Honorable Minister of National Mobilization and Constituency Representative, Frederick Stevenson. On behalf of the entire production team, here's wishing you a wonderful day. Bye-bye, until next time. St. Vincent, my homeland You gave me no mansion No gold, no diamond Yet, I love you a million For the things that you have to offer Is more than my heart's desire Lovely beach Tropical breeze Always there Within my reach I love you, St. Vince That is all the time we have on Inside Story this week. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our program. I'm Nelly Skipper. See you next time.